Good afternoon. Thank you for everyone for tuning in. Um, we're live at Chalgrove Airfield for the launch of our new Martin Baker watch. And we're here with Andrew Martin. Um, so welcome. Thank you for inviting us down here. Thank you so much, Charles. It's great to see you. Uh, welcome to Chargrove. Um, Chargrove Airfield is where Martin Baker carries out all our ejection seat qualification and testing activities. Uh, it's been uh, operated by the company since uh, 1945 and we have a variety of different uh, test equipment here. One of which is, uh, is behind us, uh, the Gloucester Meteor. Uh, one of only three I think in the world still flying and it's a fantastic uh, uh, ejection seat test vehicle which we're using you know, monthly. And this um, is yet yeah, still being used for live ejections? Still being used for live ejections. And in fact, if you remember, uh, I think it was 2010, 11, that we did our very first uh, ejection test. I was on the M airfield here at the time. Yeah, 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 with, uh, with, uh, with the MB1, the original MB1, which I think we might look at later. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're still using it. And I think we did another ejection test out of it. I think uh, you know a month or two ago. And so this is an ejection seat from one of the Meteors as well, isn't it? Yep. So this is a Mark 10 ejection seat, sort of a 1970s, 80s uh, design. But uh, this is the seat that uh, Andy Gent, our test pilot, sits on in the Meteor when uh, when he's carrying out the uh, the flight activities. Great. So, I mean, probably not everyone out there, all of our sort of audience, really knows much about the history of Martin Baker, but. You're a wonderful business. What seventy percent of sort of Western world's ejection seats, British company, um, Chalgrove. We're about 35, 40 minutes from Henley, um, but Denham is your obviously other main location, um, just on the outskirts of London. But yeah, give us a bit of history. Talk, talk about your yeah, your grandfather and. So the company was uh, has been around since 1929. Uh, originally, it was doing a. a it, it was the the founders' focuses were on on solving engineering problems. He invented a number of different uh, bits of equipment, and then in the 30s, teamed up with Captain Valentine Baker, hence the company still called Martin Baker, and they focused their efforts on designing and developing aircraft, and that's where Martin Baker Aircraft uh, came from. And a number of aircraft uh, came out of the the company at that time: an MB1, MB2. Uh, MB3 and MB5, and uh, by all accounts, there were some phenomenal uh, aircraft, some some really unique features to those aircraft. But sadly, during the uh, evolution of uh, of airplanes during the war, they just they just didn't get their production contract. Uh, and sadly, tragically, uh, Captain Baker uh, lost his life uh, testing the MB3. And uh, we like to think that uh, sadly, the loss of his best friend. Uh, uh, focus the founder's attention on uh, air crew escape. At that time, aircraft were getting faster and faster, and it was proving almost impossible for pilots to get out into the airstream. Uh, and that's where the, the Mark I ejection seat came from. And it was at this very airfield in 1945 that Benny Lynch, who has been, I think, a star of some of the. He has been a star of some of our marketing, but he was the first man to be he was ejected. The, he was a, a, a fitter in the factory at Denham and volunteered to do the, the live ejections. I think he did seven or eight. I think he drunk for free for the rest of his life, but uh, he was very brave and like so many of the pioneers at that time, really pushed technology forward. And right above in the skies above this airfield in 45, he did the first live ejection. Uh, back then, he pulled the handle, the seat was fired out. He like then, it like sh being on the sh end of a shotgun. A kind of, I don't <laughs> kind like to of. address it that way. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, he, he pulled the handle and the, the seat was fired out. And in his own time, he had to manually separate himself from the seat, push the seat away, and then open his parachute. Oh, and man. that whole process needed three and a half, four thousand feet, and took you know, about 25, 30 seconds. And really, since then until now, with our, our latest Mark 18 seat, where we do that whole sequence in basically a second, we spent 70 years getting from 30 seconds to one second. So time and the mechanical movement and the nature of the ejection seat was really, I think, one of the, one of the, the reasons that, uh, that we wanted to look for a partnership in, uh, in Watches and Hence. You came into my life well, in we came 2004 into life, or 5. Yeah, it's, it, was, it was a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, about 2004 or 5. Um, and we didn't launch the um, Martin Baker watch until, uh, what, 2009? I think we actually yeah, came out. Yeah, we, we, we celebrated, what, 10 years, a few years ago? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was an amazing experience, and you know, seeing an ejector seat come out of here with the watch on, I was flabbergasted about how quickly everything happens. But also, um, going down to Denham, it's, it was always just so interesting to see that 
actually the ejection was just only a tiny bit of the testing. I mean, everything Vibration. that we ended up putting the test through is just immense. Yeah, tell us a bit more about that. Well, I think if you recall, when we came up with the, the, the genesis of the MB partnership, the first watch we sort of looked at, we sort of took one of the existing watches at the time, and I think we collectively were underwhelmed and wanted to uh, <laughs> challenge you. We yeah, have yeah, some we, we look at that? of the original Martin wow. Baker watches here. So, yeah, I think you're best to talk us through. Talk us through that one. So this is a, based on the AL, an ALT? Yeah, the ALT 1P. So was, that was our original. We thought, let's, let's see what that So I think, remember, about. at this stage, we were talking about what features we wanted from Martin Baker that would, be, that, that would show and flow throughout the watch. And as we were doing our original walk around and looking for ideas of colors and effects and finishes and and things like that. We were playing around with, well, what would the watch star look like? And I remember very early on, and I think you can, you can, you can see it, uh, the red, we put a red triangle um, just underneath the Bremel logo. And we played around with, because of the ejection handle, which is black and yellow, we, we wanted to make sure the black and yellow featured on the watch. So I remember this as being our first attempt. And I think you actually, you, you, painted, you painted the black yeah, and yellow on. Yeah, this, this, I mean, f for Nick and I, we said, look, you wanted a watch to test and, we needed something that we felt actually chronograph, pilot's watch, that's what you know, would w really work very well. And as a test watch, we, we, we put some clear measurements. So when we were doing the video testing, you could see the hands moving and, yeah, and yeah, knots. So it's it very clear. But ultimately, this was only going to be a test watch, and it, it basically got trashed, didn't it? <laughs> I think we trashed, we trashed quite, <laughs> quite a few. A few in fact, of them. This is, there's another one. This was the, the, so the first design you came up with after we played around with look and feel was, was this. Yeah, so we still hadn't got the design clues, but this was about testing um, you know, what falls apart. And things like, interesting, the, rather than the gesture test, the vibration tests were causing so much issues, weren't they, to the watches that, that you know, what's it, 40 years of, 30 years of life? We and... basically simulate 30 years of, uh, of operation. So the seat will be subjected to 30 years worth of vibration when it's being certified. And, I, I, and we um, did the same thing for the, for the Savannah. And I think we've got some footage of the, the watch being, being shaken quite yes. aggressively. So, so I remember we had a problem with the attachment points of the movement, was that it? Yeah, there were a number of reasons, but yes, that and the crash test, you'd find that any of the, you know, when you're attaching your movement to the, the, the case of the watch, you have these tiny movement mounts, and those um, screws were just shearing off. And those vibrations were just really causing a lot of damage to the movement. So that's when we took from this design on, and we looked at, well, how do we redesign the case and put the vibration mount technology into it? Obviously, the Faraday cage was, was key on those early watches. Um, and and then, the first. Yes, talk us through this one. So, as you know, where's the, it's the next one, actually. Yeah. So, if you just, I think, if you recall, what, what I wanted to come up with was, uh, and I remember I was in, in Pakistan at the time, we were thinking that for an ejectee nowadays in the 21st century, it was great that they get a, a, a certificate and a tie, but we were thinking that maybe we could upgrade the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the membership uh, um, requirements. And uh, so we came up with the watch, and, and this was the first MB1. Yeah. And this and literally is the, the, the first one uh, that has gone through, I think I put it through 18 ejections so far, from zero, zero up to altitude ejection, up to 640 miles an hour. And look, I've just shaken it right now and it's, it's ticking again. Uh, it's never been serviced and it's keeping fantastic time, it's, which is remarkable. It, it is I, remarkable. I, I'm, 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 I'm trying my best to break it. <laughs> but I well, you certainly it yet. have put it through. And so that's when we came up, when we redesigned the case and we came up with the knurled effect and... Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't know whether people could see uh, on, on the seats, but on some of the, some of the handles and uh, some of the other things, the kneeling effect, I think you were the one that taught me the word <laughs> kneeling, uh, but this, uh, this sort of textured metal was, we came up with it from the handles of the uh, ejection seats. 
and it's great to see and I think there are so many features and even now with the launch of the Savannah we're still finding features within the product range and equipment within an ejection seat that we can use as source material uh, for creating new features of the watches. Yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant. As a designer, you're going to, whether it's our limited editions, but obviously with Marta Baker, you know, our oldest partnership, it's sitting down with the organization, going through their design ethos and, and understanding how, what little tweaks we can do. And we're at a point where we want to talk about the new watch, the Bremont MB Savannah. Um, we have a little video we'll, we'll show you. So I hope you enjoyed that video of the new MB Savannah, and we have them here. Uh, we have two of the test Savannahs, haven't they? They've all been through various but testings. Over we're not yet complete. We've still got more still damage more to, to try and uh, subject them to. And um, this is this is it's always a challenging. Um, also, I like to hang on to the test watches. You like to try yeah. and take them back. So, I, I so, like to so, try and hang on. So to Andrew's them. now got this sort of this most amazing sort of collection of previous very, very limited edition Martin Baker watches. But the Savannah, we're really excited to be able to do this. It's the first titanium uh, Martin Baker watch we've built. Um, but we've come up with this new treatment, um, which has this sort of um, slight sandblast gray-green effect to it over the titanium. Titanium cases are all built um, at the Bremont Manufacturing Technology Center, the wing, which is just down the road from here, uh, where we're using actually very similar machines, aren't we? To, yeah, to, to, walking around, we've got the same CNC machine, I know, same Morisiki machine. So we yeah. can make some of your bits and you can make some of ours. Maybe. Sort of maybe. Like, maybe. <laughs> um, and uh, still with the internal rotor click uh, bezel, obviously the vibration mount, but we're open case back on this with a new um, rotor, skeletonized rotor. I mean, although it's interesting, I was talking to someone the other day, the, the Martin Baker, the case looks very similar from the original case, but I th we've gone through a large number of iterations throughout the history of this as we're changing the way we design the case, and partly it's due to new manufacturing processes. Um, but um, it's come to this titanium case where I think it's, it's for, for pilots, that often that lightweight um, ability of a titanium, I think, really adds something to it. And, and you came up with the name Savannah. I did. <laughs> yeah. um, I think when we, like I was saying earlier, when we were looking for sort of inspiration and ideas, uh, if you look at the par a, a parachute um, in, the, in the Martin Baker seat, the, the parachute's made up of uh, a number of different colors, uh, desert or Savannah, uh, jungle, which has some links also to Savannah, the orange and the white, and those are for camouflage reasons, for uh, for um, alert, for uh, lost and found. If you can, uh, if you're sitting there on the snow, you can make an orange line with a parachute. So we found that color, and I think that was the start of it. Uh, and um, yeah, I think the uh, the lightweightness. I mean, I, as you know, the the MB is, is has been a good seller in the in the military market. I've no doubt that when people see this version of it, I think there'll be squadrons coming back for a second version I mean, because they'll like the really lightweightness of it. I, th I think that it is, and I think that this one is on a, a rubber strap. Obviously, we can have it on the NATO straps, all the rest of the uh, or, or, or leather straps that, that Bremont create, but it. Really, is the Martin Baker has become almost a de facto military watch out there, hasn't it? No, it's it's been really wonderful at some of the the shows that we now co-exhibit at together. Uh, Tail hooks coming up in uh, in uh, in Reno, and then WebTAC at uh, in Las Vegas in January. 
uh, to be alongside you when we're doing our job, which is to market and sell ejection seats, and to see you guys beside with the air crew getting as excited about the watches and seeing the link and the synergy, it's, it's, it's phenomenal to see that. And I've it, no doubt it will continue here with the, with the Savannah. Yes, and I think the, um, the, the challenge we, we had with this and in creating it is any new treatment we're ever building on a watch, and it's exactly the same with you, with your seats, is you have to go through that testing again. Is it going to rub off very easily? Titanium, um, it's, it's a, a different process of, of the way we machine it um, to a normal case. Um, but we wanted the, the titanium effect that with, with the, the hardening treatment we're putting on with the Savannah treatment, it actually, it has to look good, but it has to work, doesn't it? I mean, it's remarkable. This, this watch has been through a number, this particular Savannah has been through a number of ejection tests. Uh, it was subjected to some very, very short but intense um, uh, hot temperature because of a, a canopy jettison motor. And uh, it was in, I think it was in the video, the salt fog uh, degradation test when it sat in a very corrosive environment for 24, 40, I think it was 48 hours. And if you look at the, the material and the surface, it, it looks brand new. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's, uh, it's, it's remarkable how uh, intact it is after being subjected to some pretty, pretty serious. And you uh, could you could tell by the strap the actual testing has been through, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit manky. A little bit manky, but um, and and one of the tests you did with two watches on, didn't you? We did. We put uh, we put a watch in the line of fire, so to speak, of a canopy jettison motor, just to subject it to a very intense um, uh, 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 rocket rocket motor flume. And then another watch we put on the same ejection. So we, uh, and I think we've got a, I think, I think in the video there was a great, a great video of, uh, of the um, watch on the wrist of the mannequin. Yeah, and, and you know, the, getting access to that content is, is an amazing thing for us. And I have to thank you all and everyone at Martin Baker for providing that, because I know it, you have to set up the cameras and do all those extra bits. The, the guys do a fantastic job in support of this and, uh, and trying to sort of fit in this work. Uh, at the same time as them doing their important testing is, uh, is fantastic. They're, they're willing to do it. I don't have to give away two watches, too many watches. <laughs> yes, and you keep a few yourself, obviously, on the, on the back enough, of it. Not enough. Not enough. And uh, yeah, the, the watch you're wearing today is slightly unusual. You've just done this to annoy me, haven't you? I do. I love irritating you with it. It took, uh, I think it took two years to persuade you to, uh, to create it, to celebrate the monumental milestone of 10 years of selling thousands of watches together, and we, we created this uh, unique um, MB, uh, MB2 in a, in a sort of nice material. Yeah, so Andrew basically strong-armed us to create a gold MB, one of one, and uh, uh, yeah, it's it's not the normal you don't, material you know, you're you'd never use. happy when I wear it. <laughs> no, you, you like rose gold. Of, why do you just yeah. like rose gold? Why, why yeah. is that? What's wrong with it's, it's beautiful the, the big yellow gold. yellow gold as well? This is sort of uh, it's lovely seeing the development of the partnership together. Um, it's been going a long time and still full of ideas. And I think as new materials we test. Um, come out. It's it's lovely to create and develop and take that watch further on, but still not lose the DNA of what it's all about. I think there was one moment, and I think if I can look back over the whole um, 15 years of our of our friendship, uh, I found myself on an airplane flight flying from Washington to uh, to California somewhere, <clears throat> and I sat next to this guy, and I noticed that he was wearing uh, a Bremer MB, and uh, and I said tell me about the watch. And he spoke so enthusiastically about this watch and talked to me about all the testing that it had gone through and how much he loved it and it was a gift from his father. And I didn't tell him who I was, but I just, it, it, was, a, it was one of the nicest moments of this whole experience to see that this partnership is, is creating uh, some fantastic mechanical timepieces being enjoyed by people all over the world. No, oh, well, really appreciate it. And I think we've created something together that I think is, is totally different, not only the whole watch collection, but obviously with the latest Savannah. And I really recommend, you know, as with all Bremer watches, picking them up, holding it, go to your local retailer, come and visit us at the wing, um, but we'd love to show you more. And, uh, but yeah, you know, really thank you everyone for joining in and tuning in to watch us. Thank you, Andrew Martin, for Always a pleasure hosting to see you, us. Charles, take care. Charles Grove today, really appreciate it. Thank you, man. But um, yeah, see you all soon.